Dear Judo family, following the conclusion of this long Olympic period, one year later than expected due to the COVID pandemic situation, we are now looking forward to the next Olympic cycle up until 2024. We have received proposals and recommendations from national federations for rule amendments or changes. The IJB is working hard to continue modernizing our beloved sport and with the input of our partners, we are happy to present the updated rules which will come into force from start of 2022 till the end of 2024. The purpose of these rules is to protect athletes and our sport as a whole, while promoting judo to be more dynamic, more attractive for the public and the media. So let's look at the new rules. Let's have a look at the changes in the IJF qualification system. For the Olympic Games 2024, the IJF will apply the same qualification system as the Tokyo cycle to allocate 372 places. Now, 17 athletes per category will qualify via direct quota. Across 14 categories, that equals 238. 100 athletes qualify via continental quota, 20 athletes qualify via universality places, formerly known as invitation places and wild cards. 14 athletes qualify via organizer or host nation quota, totaling 372. The Olympic qualification will begin on the 24th of June 2022, and it will finish on the 23rd of June 2024. For the World Championships for seniors, only athletes ranked from 1 to 100 on the Senior World Ranking List and athletes ranked from 1 to 16 on the Junior World Ranking List can take part. Equally ranked athletes can all participate. The IJF Head Sports Director will select and communicate a date when the Senior World Ranking List will be used for qualification and seeding for the World Championships for Seniors. The new weigh-in times will be 1800 hours, 6 p.m. on the day before the competition. Organizers of World Championships for Juniors and World Championships for Cadets, cities and regions, could have additional wild cards for their local and regional athletes, not affecting national federation quotas. Now, the number of athletes proposed by the local organizing committee must be agreed by the IJF head sport director and be aligned appropriately with the world ranking list points. For all participants of world championships for juniors and world championships for cadets, minimum technical requirements will be requested under the supervision of the IJF Academy. Let's talk about the new Judogi control regulations for 2022. In the event that the Judogi does not comply with the current rules at the official Judogi control, the competitor will be given a second and final chance. Now, if the Judogi does not comply, the competitor will be disqualified from their contest. A preliminary Judogi control will operate from two days before the competition and this measure aims to help the competitors get another judogi and have their bat number sewn in the event that they fail the judogi control. This service will be operational throughout at dedicated communicated times. Two days before the start of the competition, the host country will try, within the context of the sanitary conditions in force, to provide judogi for sale in partnership with a local provider. The distance of the crossing points of the jacket at the belt level is increased up to 25 centimetres instead of 20 centimetres previously. The jacket must cover the buttocks of the competitor extensively with an additional margin of 5 centimetres. Sokoteki will be made available in the warm-up area 
so that the competitors can check the compliance of their judogi before proceeding to the official judogi control. The new measures will be circulated to all IJF national federations. The General Secretariat and the Education and Coaching Commission can be contacted by email for any further details and information. GS at IJF.org, Manager Judo ECC at Yahoo FR. Decision one. Scoring for actions that without stopping are a continuation of techniques. If there is a stop in the action, there is no score. In this example, it's a continuation of the same movement that gets the score. From a different angle, the Sianagi drives and continues driving all the way through. Score. Once again, a continuous movement driving all the time off the back legs. Score. And again, driving off the back leg, no break in the movement, a good score with no break in the action. Here we see a clear stop in the action and then a second drive, no score. From a different angle, notice the stop, then the second action, no score. Clear stop in the action, there with the Sianagi and a second action, so no score given. There's the stop in the action and there is the second drive, no score. Once again, two different actions and no score given. Notice how the first one stops and then starts again, no score. Once again, a good example of stopping the action and then driving off the ground. There's the first action and then the second action to take her opponent over, so no score. Decision two. Wazari criteria comprises landing on the whole side of the body at 90 degrees or more to the rear or on one shoulder and upper back. A score will be given for a whole side of the body landing even when the elbow is out. Hip and shoulder position must be considered. Notice the 90 degree angle of the landing to score a Wazari. He lands on his side at 90 degrees. This is a great example of Tori driving and at this stage here, 90 degrees is reached and Wazari scored. Different angle, there's the drive and there is the score. This Sumagaishi, as you can see at this point here, perfect 90 degrees landing and gets the score. Here it is from another angle, and again, 90 degrees, landing and score. This time Koji Gary, and just lands at the 90 degree angle to gain the score. At the moment of impact, 90 degree landing before she turns onto her front and score. This landing beyond the 90 degrees, landing on the front, so no score. Whether the arm is out or in doesn't make any difference because it's more towards the front, which means no score. In this example, this point here, you can see that the opponent is more on their front and that the 90 degree angle hasn't been achieved. Here we see it from a different angle. The elbow is out and clearly on the front, no score. And for this example, 
you can see that the 90 degree angle is not quite achieved. It's more on the front, so no score given. Different angle, we can see it. It doesn't quite reach the criteria. No score. Decision three. Wazari criteria comprises landing on the whole side of the body at 90 degrees or more to the rear or on one shoulder and upper back. A score will be given for a whole side body landing even when the elbow is out. Once the shoulder and upper part of the back make contact, then a score will be given. In this competition example, the shoulder and upper back make contact with the mat. So it gets a clear score. Decision four. Landing simultaneously on two elbows or hands towards the back is Wazari for Tori and Shido for Uki. When two elbows touch at the same time, it's Shido and score. When both hands touch the floor at the same time, again, Shido and a score was Ari given. And of course, when one elbow and one hand touch the floor, once again, it was Ari given and a Shido. Competition example shows the landing, both hands together and was Ari given. Now it will be a was Ari and a Shido. From a different angle and again, both hands, Wazari and Shido. The second example here, both hands land together, definite score, but now Shido as well. And for this final example, once again, two hands down, Wazari and Shido given. Decision five. No score for counter techniques where the initial attack is rolled to the back towards the counter-attacking or defending judoka. All of these following examples will now receive no score. Decision six, no score and Shido for reverse Sienagi. All of these following examples will now receive no score and a Shido. Decision seven, gripping under the belt in the end phase of a throwing technique is allowed if the opponent is already in newaza. If the throwing technique is interrupted, gripping under the belt is a newaza action. This example, the action is not affected by touching the leg. So the score 
will be given. In this competition example, we can see that the action is continuous and that the hand only touches the leg in the end phase of the technique. So score will be given. If there is a stop in the action, then it's classed as Niwaza. So you're allowed to take the leg. Here we can see two different actions and then the Newaza roll. So in this competition example, we can see that there is a break in the action and so classed as Newaza. Decision eight. Collar and lapel grips are allowed if not negative. As long as Tori is not deemed as being negative, but trying to throw their opponent, then they won't be penalized for this lapel and collar grip. Decision nine, belt grip one side grip cross grip pistol grip and pocket grip are not traditional grips. If taken, time will be allowed for the preparation of an attack. Decision 10. Breaking the grips and immediately taking grips is allowed. Breaking grips and not taking a grip immediately is Shido. In this example, Tori immediately breaks the grip but then tries to take the grip and that is allowed. In these two examples, we can clearly see they're breaking grips and not trying to retake them. Therefore, Shido will be given. Decision 11. Retying and arranging judogi and hair is allowed once per judoka per contest. Further occasions are penalized with Shido. The first time will be allowed. Any time after that, Shido will be given. The first time will be allowed. Any time after that, Shido will be given. Decision 12. Techniques using head diving are dangerous and will be penalized with Honsokumaki. This 
is a serious head dive deemed as very dangerous and therefore on Sokamaki. Once again, Tori throwing himself onto his head, therefore, Hansokamaki. <laughs>